Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain you how to properly use Python's mesh grid function. Furthermore, I will explain you how to use the mesh grid function to generate 2D or 3D plots. For example, let's say that we want to plot a parabolic 3D function. This function can have this form. Z is x squared plus y squared. Now, I will teach you how to generate the two-dimensional contour plot of this function that you can see over here. Furthermore, I will teach you how to generate the 3D plots that you can see over here and over here. In addition to this video, I have created a web page or a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. This web page contains Python codes, contains the explanation, contains graphs, and contains the basic ideas that are behind the mesh grid function and explains how to use this function to generate 3D plots. A link to this post is given in the description below. Before I start, I have to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time to create this video and the follow-up web page. So if you find this video useful or if it solves your problem, please consider to press the like button and to subscribe. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start. First, we will import the necessary libraries. This module over here will tell to matplotlib, the library that's used for plotting, to enable the 3D plotting. And you will see later in this video how this module will be used. Then we import the matplot library and we import numpy. Okay, so first we demonstrate the basic usage of the mesh grid function. In order to use the mesh grid function, we first need to specify two vectors that define the x and y values of the mesh grid. These two vectors are x and y, whose entries start from 0 and end at 5. We use the numpy linspace function to define these vectors. So here's the vector x and here's the vector y. Once we have these vectors, we can provide these vectors as arguments to the mesh grid function. So here is our mesh grid functions, function. The first entry is x, the second entry is y. Okay, so let's see the result. This function produces two matrices. The first matrix is x. These are the x coordinates. And the second matrix is the matrix Y, the matrix of Y coordinates. Okay, now that we have specified and defined the X and Y matrices, let's see what the entries of these matrices represent. Basically, the entries of these two matrices correspond to the points on the grid that you can see over here. For example, if I take entry 1, 2 of the X matrix and the entry 1, 2 of the Y matrix and I place them in the coordinate system X and Y or the Cartesian coordinate system, they define a point over here. So, going back to my code, let's see that point. X 1, 2 is 2, basically. This is the x coordinate of the point that's represented by this red circle. And the y entry at the position 1, 2 represents the y coordinate in the same coordinate system. So this is basically our y 1 2 and this is our basically x 1 2 
We can, for example, use the Python zip function to see these points. So what do I do here? I basically take x, first row of x, I take the first row of y, I zip them together, and I print the values. So let's see the values. Okay, so here are the values. These are our points, basically, represented by this row over here. Okay, so let's see how the mesh grid function can be used to create 3D plots. Okay, so let's say that I want to visualize the function whose analytical form is given by this equation. This is obviously a parabolic function. I take the x values, I square them, and I add the squares of the y values. And obviously, the graphical representation of this function is given by this figure. Now, the main question is how to generate this 3D plot in Python. Well, we need to define obviously a grid of points and to evaluate the values of this function over a grid. So here is my grid. Here are the points. And then I will take x and y coordinates of every point on this grid and I will substitute them in this equation and I will create z values. And here is my z value over here. Now, you can obviously write for loops, double for loops. You can maybe uh, formulate even a single for loop and you can achieve that. However, Python has a more elegant approach for doing this procedure. We will use the mesh grid function. So first of all, I will define two vectors. The vector x will represent the x coordinates of my points on the grid, and the vector y will represent the y coordinates of my points on the grid. Now, the next step is to call the mesh grid function. This function will produce two matrices, the matrix x and the matrix y. These two matrices define a grid. How this grid is being formed? Well, again, you take this entry, you combine it with this entry, and these two entries correspond to a point on the grid. Then you take this entry, you combine it with this entry, and it represents another point on the grid. Now, once we have these two points, we can basically simply write something like this. We can say z is x squared plus y squared, where x and y are actually matrices. So what happens here? This square is not a square of a matrix. This is basically a square operation applied element-wise to our function. And you can see that by plotting x and then plotting x squared. So here's our x squared. Minus 5 squared is 25. Minus 4 squared is 16, etc. Now, similarly, when, when you square y, you apply the square operation element-wise, right? And then this plus symbol is not basically any mysterious symbol. This is the symbol that adds two matrices together. And it adds them, of course, element-wise. So I will take x squared applied element-wise, y-square applied element-wise, add them together, and I will define my z function. So this corresponds basically to the operation that looks like this, z, i, j, entry, this is now element-wise, is equal to x, i, j, this is a single entry squared plus y i j squared. Here is the expression. 
Let's evaluate it. Okay, here's my z. So this z represents the values of my function defined over the grid, right? You can see a nice symmetry at 0, at 0, and it's a very nice, uh, very nice function that we will now visualize. How to visualize this function? There are three approaches. Let's first visualize it in two dimensions. We define our figure, then we use the contour f function to basically visualize our function or to define basically a plot. We specify the x values, y values, and the z values. x and y are returned from the mesh grid and z is defined by this equation. Now I specify the C map parameter. This is just a, a method used to visualize the colors. And then I specify a few other parameters and I save my figure. So here's my result. So here's my function. It's represented in two-dimensional plane. The next approach is to visualize this function in 3D. So we will use the function plot surface. Now, in order to use this function, we need to import this module, plot 3D. This module is important because it will enable 3D plotting in matplotlib library. So we will achieve that by specifying projection is equal to 3D. So this parameter, projection is equal to 3D, enables 3D plotting. However, to use this parameter, we need to import basically this module. So then similarly to contour f, we specify x, y, and z parameters. We specify the method for representing the colors. We specify some other parameter. This is transparency. We set the labels. And here, with this command, we basically rotate the plot. And we save the figure. So here is the result. OK, so here, here is our 3D representation of the function. We can rotate the plot by adjusting, for example, these parameters. We can say 30, 30 over here. These are the angles. Let's see the result. Is it a better or not? Mm, maybe a little bit better and let's say if we put 90 over here let's see the result okay this is bad actually we need to return to 60 over here so you can basically play with the angle of rotation of your graph in order to find the best angle that's more the most suitable for your final result for your figure that you will import in your report or scientific paper. In addition to contour f and plot surface functions, there is another function that can be used for plotting 3D functions in Python. The name of this function is contour 3D. So let's see how to use this function. Again, I define my figure. I set the projection to be 3D and I define my input parameters to contour 3D function. They are x, y, and z. Here, this parameter adjusts the density of the lines. So let's start with the low density. And of course, this map, basically C map parameter, specify the method for visualizing the results. So I'm using the binary approach. Here, I specify the angle and I save my figure. So let's run this code. OK, so here is my function. I see that basically contours are very sparse, so I will increase this parameter. I will set it to 50. And let's see the final result. OK, now the function looks nicer. It's much nicer. And you can see that over here, I save the result. And all the results are saved in this current folder that you can see over here. And let's see the PNG files. So this is my PNG file. You see a very nice plot over here. This is the second plot using 
the second approach and this is my 2D representation of the function. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like button and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.